I'm Jake Bruton, and today on the Build Show Network, I'm joined by Eric Ani, Mechanical Hub, Ani Plumbing and Heating, is that what it's called? Yeah. yeah. Uh, and we're on an active job site, so sorry about the hammering. We're going to talk about the plumbing on this house. Let's Imagine do that. this. <laughs> Let's do it now, dork. Okay, so we are at our Cattle Ranch project. This is a house that Aero Building, our custom home building firm, is building in Lewisburg, Kansas, south of Kansas City. So this is our Kansas City office as opposed to our Columbia office that we were in yesterday. Uh, there are roofers here. You're going to have to just skip the video if you don't want to hear the noise. Sorry, we're not going to ask them to stop for this one. They're making really good progress, and it's hot. This is very similar to the job we looked at yesterday. Yeah. Slab on grade, turn down slab. So footings, uh, trench footings, poured up to a slab. Yep. And then two layers of halo Intera insulation. Uh, we have a vapor barrier underneath the slab with the Stego home. And then we have two layers of Advantech. Here we chose to go with uh, X Factor. So if you can see the floor, it's the yellow product. That's why it looks funky because it isn't regular Advantech mainly just for markability. We weren't really looking for a durability upgrade here. It was mainly just to be able to lay things out because just like the other house, we've framed exterior walls or our load bearing partitions. And then we've created a warehouse to work inside of here to do the floor and to walls and plumbing and everything. What makes this interesting from a plumbing standpoint? <laughs> it's very interesting actually. So of course you have your, your uh, waste and vent sub you know, floor plumbing. So yep. you've got your, all your groundwork is in for your rough in. Yep. But I only see like a couple water lines at all. And in fact, I see entire bathroom or, you know, plumbing groups that have no water run yep. to them. That whatsoever. are missing all of the, the, the PEX A or PEX B or whatever. Yep. You know. So typically in, in any normal slab construction, we're running the water distribution from maybe a centralized point where it comes into the building, mechanical room, something like that, and then in distribution to each individual location where we need water. Yep. And we're doing that on the groundwork. Yeah, sub, -sub slab, the yep. same time we put in the white pipe. Yeah, yeah. And that's not what you've done here. You've also, uh, you're, you're looking at just a completely different approach because you're gonna feed everything from overhead because you've created this conditioned space yeah. separating it from the attic. So effectively we have an inch and a half tall soffit around the entire building. Yeah. So we have our Sega Myrex or panels that are zip to be our air barrier. They're yeah. also uh, smart vapor retarder. And then the top side of that is insulation. We're gonna strap with two by fours underneath that. And when we do, that creates all these little raceways that we can feed things wherever we want without having to have a wall or, you know, and. So our first thought process was like, well, why bury the lines in the concrete if we don't have to? Yeah, well, when, you know, so we're, we're used to doing that. It's yeah. what we've always done. But what we chance or we risk when we do that is either not putting the water lines yep. in the right place. <laughs> not getting the right spot. Yeah. I've done it. I've put water lines into a hallway before mm -hmm. by, just by mistake. It happens. Yeah, change order. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's very expensive because in those cases we're breaking concrete because remember yeah. we were below the floor. Now, you actually had a damage line, so that would be the other thing. We could have water lines coming up all over the place, increasing risk. Risk. Every one of those we could damage at any yep. given time, whether it's moving materials around on a job site, whether it was pouring the concrete. Yeah. Okay. Those water lines can also move around in the pro pouring process. There's a lot of things that could happen. You eliminated most of that. You do have a couple water lines run here yep. because you've got a freestanding tub. Well, yep. you're not going to feed from overhead in that scenario unless yep. you've got maybe a wall mount faucet or something like yep. that. Different, you know, you don't have that here. You're going to have a pedestal mount. But you've we're got, still slab top, we should say. This is still on top point. of the slab. That is, that is a good point. So you didn't put it below the slab, poured the slab, everything was good. As you were putting in your insulation barrier, is that when? Yeah. So the plumbers came and roughed in before we started uh, just this. The plumbers made a trip, special trip, cost money. Yep. And this is just tacked on top of the slab, just long enough for us to cover it up, basically. We could have totally done this ourselves. Sure. If we wanted to. Yep. They wouldn't have minded, probably. And like you said, we had one in the kitchen that was Because damaged. you've got a, well, but you've got a we pedestal sink over there. Yeah, an we island. have an island. And so then, yeah, you guys, there was unfortunate damage on, when you guys were 
sub finishing flooring. yeah the yep. subfloor. It happens. It does. And they were able to just work it back and forth a few few times to get it loose, pull it out, stick a new piece of pipe in, and keep going without having to work backwards to take anything apart. Really, so far, what I've heard in the conversation and how you guys did this, it really just was one extra trip for your subcontractor. Yeah. And that extra trip's actually valuable. See the stage of the construction, maybe they can fit their, you know, change their schedule around or something like that. It's just useful. They got to see probably for the first time yep. how this was all gonna really look because although you guys have meetings, it's on the plan. If you've never done this, like I wouldn't know what this looked like until I came down and visit your job yeah. site, you know? And so it's, it's the conversation that we're constantly having about, well, if we build the same house the same way next time, we didn't learn anything this time. Yeah. And sometimes the, the process is, oh, we screwed that up, so we're not gonna do that again. And sometimes, like this, the process was, we should think outside the box and see if there's something else that we could do here. I think that this is gonna be a wash price-wise. Okay. All the supply lines that have to run throughout the house, there's gonna be very little drilling. They're going to be, able, it's ladder work, but we have scaffolding. Most of the doorways they can push our baker's rack through here. They shouldn't, it shouldn't be a big deal for them well, to be on ladders. I'll be honest with you, this type of distribution system now, not to get overly technical, we're not going to talk about sizing and stuff like that, but this affords you to use less material. Yeah. So as, a, as the installing contractor, I'm going to look at this and realize very quickly that I'm more efficient because I'm not continually running lines yep. just to get to centralized manifold locations so I can get over here and over there. So that, that's all a lot of water, a lot of energy, a lot of materials. Just to be clear, you're saying like, oh, well, normally we'd come into the house here and then from where the water heater is going to be, we'd have to run to that room, we'd have to run to that room, we'd have to run to that room. Yeah, just and those rooms chain. don't really connect, so we have to be separate lines. Now we can split off and go to one end of the house and then manifold from there. Yeah. And the other end of the house and then manifold from there. And it, it less material equates to less labor and the, we've, we're putting less in. Well, right? less, less fitting, like the likelihood of having less connections, less fittings, less leak path potentials, potentially. It just depends yeah. on how it all lays out, right? But you don't have that, um, that option when you're doing the traditional installation of the subfloor, sub slab yep. uh, distribution. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, it works. We yeah. know that, right? We it, know it, it works. It's effective. But I, I'm just looking at this and see, realizing an opportunity to use less materials. You still have the functionality of being able to do hot water recirculation. Yep. You're, you're gonna be able to better, probably better and more effectively insulate the water lines uh, whereas when you're doing it sub slab, there's always a big risk of having that insulation damage, things like that, which yep. is going to affect its performance over time. Yep. You've got, you know, nice, clean, workable conditions without backfilling rock over it and things like that. I think that, um, so far this has been an asset. And I think at this point we're probably already leaning towards trying it again. Uh, I think it's a pretty interesting way to do this. I think long term we can refish lines or we can repair things without having to take up concrete. Uh, I've seen comments about this online being like, well, what happens if you spring a leak? A water leak is never a good thing. No, like if you spring never. a leak in the wall, you spring a leak in the floor, you spring a leak sub slab, there's a repair <laughs> cost with it. We get it. Look, I'd rather have a leak over a finished ceiling because I'm going to see that a lot sooner than I'm going to see a leak below yep. my floor. Neither, you've already covered that. I, I don't yeah. want a leak in either scenario, yeah. but I, f I feel like that might actually be an advantage. Um, I think it, it gives you a little more flexibility. I know your plumbing is set. We're, the, we're, we're yeah. committed at this point in time, but you, we talked about it a minute ago. You didn't miss a wall with this yeah. scenario. Yeah. You're not gonna miss a wall when yeah. we come from overhead. Um, and that is a real factor. I mean, yeah mistakes are made so you avoid one, that yeah. one repair i think it i think it's worth it right there okay don't forget to follow eric on the build show network and on instagram mechanical hub on instagram eric's putting out a video every week just like we are what day does yours come out i think they come out on tuesdays eric thinks on tuesdays <laughs> uh till next time thanks for watching sign up for that newsletter follow us on instagram follow eric on instagram check out the unbuild it podcast and it, Eric, thanks for coming down and hanging out for a couple days. Yeah, thanks, uh, it's man. been a pleasure to have you. Have a nice day. <laughs>